Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood guide, Yubi Fung, but you can also call me Beef. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys five different outfits from five different aesthetics. We have girl boss, Y2K style, soft girl, another kind of soft girl, and lastly, a fun and flirty beach look. That is definitely not all the aesthetics out there, but I still hope you guys enjoy this video nonetheless, and let's start! Woo! I call this outfit the sexy girl boss look. Not that I'm in any way sexy, but that was just what I was aiming for. I don't think you can wear this in formal settings, obviously because of my shorts, <coughs> but you can always wear this on the streets to intimidate people. I started the look with a light blue bralette from 68 and paired it with some striped shorts which was part of a two-piece set I picked up on a holiday to Penang, Malaysia. I then put on the matching blazer which completed the whole girl boss look. Moving on, I picked up some silver jewellery to complement the grey tones in both the bralette and the two-piece set. My silver earrings are from Vitorina and my horseshoe necklace is from SK Jewellery. As the blazer is quite formal looking, I made the look more casual and suitable for everyday life by pairing it with a pair of high-cut converse in the colour of white. Of course, if you wanted to go for the full-on girl boss look, you could also wear black heels which would show off your legs along with the shorts but me and heels, they don't do very well together so I'm going to be sticking with my sneakers. I also wore some IKEA socks to make the whole outfit a bit more hype-ish. Honestly, I'm not very familiar with that aesthetic so I'm just trying. Without the blazer, it could still pass in Singapore's weather which is basically summer all year round but with the blazer, holy it was hot. I was sweating and that says a lot for someone who barely sweats at all. But of course, of course, this blazer would still work really well in countries that actually has the season autumn or you could always buy a blazer made of thinner material for Singapore's weather. Lastly, you could also wear a baseball cap with this look and I drew the inspiration from Susie's character in While You Were Sleeping. She had a similar outfit during the bus stop scene but just with long pants instead of shorts. And that is all for the first outfit. I call the second look Polly Pocket Nostalgia. This is what I envision a Polly Pocket character would wear on a trip to the shopping district. It's as if a pastel fashion unicorn threw up on me. In this look, I started off with a pair of light blue jeans from Uniqlo and a purple off-shoulder top which used to be very popular back in 2018, but now, not so much. Recently, I discovered that tying the sleeves of the off-shoulder top to form a bow tie in front of my chest area actually made it look more trendy. So that's what I have been doing with these tops. Next, I added a belt to the ensemble to section my torso and legs as the purple of the top and the blue of the jeans kind of blended in with each other, making me look like a rectangle. I wore the same jewellery as the previous look and accessorized my head with a pink bucket hat from Adidas and a mint bag from Charles & Keith. There really isn't a colour scheme to this look but I feel like the outfit still works as all the pieces are pastel which really ties the outfit together. If I could choose any pair of shoes to match with this outfit, I would definitely choose a pair of white heeled boots to complete the Y2K style. And that is all for the second look. I call the third outfit the 1920s nightgown inspired soft girl. Honestly, I don't know if I'm even naming the correct aesthetics at this point but this look makes me want to frolic in the park and have a picnic under the Eiffel Tower. I started this look with a slip dress which I thrifted and thrift flipped. Prior to this, the dress looked more like pyjamas for a 10 year old. The fabric of the slip dress looks really smooth and wraps around your curves which helps to show off a more flattering figure. Next, I put on a pair of acrylic earrings with brown details from After All and a pearl necklace from SK Jewelry. With just the slip dress, it looked too much like lingerie for my liking so I wore a cream cardigan from Pool & Bear to complete the soft girl look. The look is very feminine and this outfit is one that I really enjoy and wear out often. Lastly, I paired the look with a brown handbag which was actually the packaging of an equally aesthetic looking Bluetooth speaker from Mizen. This whole look looks perfect for a fancy picnic with blue cheese and rare wine even though the slip dress was only like 3 bucks. 
The day I can go out for picnics again, I'm totally wearing this and that is all for the third look. I call the fourth outfit bookstore chic. This is the kind of person who has a stack of books at home left unread but still goes to the bookstore anyway just for the environment and is probably a total coffee snob. This outfit is an upgraded version of the t-shirt under the dress look. Instead of a cotton tee, I went with a thrifted short sleeved blouse that gives the outfit a vintage style on top of the soft girl look. The jacket dress is from Boogie Street and I really love the colours of this dress and the gingham pattern was what actually drew me to it. I paired a brown Charles and Keith tassel crossbody bag which has similar tones as the lines in the jacket dress making it look more coherent in terms of its visuals. I then tied up my hair and wore my spectacles for the stereotypical nerd look or as what I like to call it, how I looked like back in junior college. Lastly, I would pair this outfit with a pair of brown leather Mary Janes to tie the brown tone look together. And I guess that it's pretty clear that I do not own many pairs of shoes but I mean, it's the effort that counts, right? And that's all for the fourth look. I call the last outfit the picnic beach outfit and this is the distant relative of the picnic beach outfit. This outfit is perfect for walking on sand and staring at the waves as it crashes against the shore. In this outfit, I tied a pink translucent scarf that I had to form a tube top. The tube top style together with the flowiness of the scarf makes this the perfect top for a beach look. I wore a pair of white shorts and cinched in my waist using the same hot belt from outfit 2. However, in all honesty, no Asian parent would ever let their child go to the beach in these shorts because the sand that gets into the pockets will be impossible to remove. I then wore a canvas tote that I received as a graduating gift from my biology teachers. I wore a pair of houndstooth block heels to match the relaxing vibe of the whole outfit. This bag is the perfect size for stuffing all your extra clothes if you decide to tread into the water. But if you're not a big fan of getting wet, the tassel crossbody bag that I wore in the previous look will also work well with this outfit. Lastly, if you are someone who is scared to wear just a scarf as a top, you can use the scarf as a cover-up for your swimsuit instead. And that is all I have for the final look. Sally, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys around soon.